Trump calls on Alabama to protect IVF treatment after bombshell ruling. You know, some of you heard about this court case that it was, I think it was, the news was released uh, just yesterday concerning this in vitro fertilization. And when we, as Christians, we need to understand there's certain things that Christians should not do. This type of artificial insemination requires self-abuse for a man to pleasure himself so that his sperm can be donated. Self-abuse is a violation of God's law. Self-abuse is a form of fornicating. Fornication, the Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery and fornication are the same. So many use the term masturbation. You know, the, this is a violation of God's law. So IVF is not a way that a married couple should seek to have a child. If you want a child, I would encourage you to do what Hannah did and pray and ask God if it is his will that you may have a child. But I know based upon Bible prophecy, with Trump being the last president, we don't have much more time on this earth. Jesus said, woe unto them that are with child and those they give suck in those days. In other words, if you have a child and you're running because of persecution, is that a situation you want to really uh, put a baby in? An infant in? No, you don't want to put a child in that kind of situation. Now is not the time to be having children. It's not. And I say this in, in all sincerity and all, all love to Christians in general because persecution is coming. We do not have much more time. I'm sorry. And so IVF is not for Christians. It's, it's not the means to awake me to have ch uh, children. In the, it, it, it is modern day sorcery is what it is. That's what this is. It is modern day sorcery. So I want to appeal to my Christian brothers and sisters to avoid this use. And I know that some you may not have known the truth about IVF before hearing this. And, and, you know, when we don't know, God doesn't hold us accountable. But once we know, God says, once you know better, do better. Amen? So this is very important that it needs to be touched on because... Many do not understand where we are prophetically. And with Trump being the last president, based on Bible prophecy, he will be the last president. We need to understand this church state issue that's happening. Notice this other article here. It says, Chief Justice's Christian reasoning in IBF opinion sparks alarm over church state separation. He quoted the Bible, addresses this here from L.A. Times, which says, Bible quoting Alabama Chief Justice sparks church-state debate embryo ruling. This needs to be discussed to, you know, medical missionaries should be discussing this, as well as preachers of the Bible should be discussing this. For those of you that don't know, it says, when the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos are considered children under state law, its chief justice had a higher authority in mind. By citing verses from the Bible and Christian theologians, in his concurring opinion, Chief Justice Tom Parker alarmed advocates for church state separation while delighting religious conservatives who oppose abortion. Now, those of you who know me know that I stand completely against abortion, even in cases of rape. I don't believe that we need to have an abortion. If that mother happens to have that child, God will take care of that child. Amen? It all boils down to where your faith is. How powerful do you think God is to supply whatever we need? Let me go back to the article. It says here, human life, Parker wrote, cannot be wrongfully destroyed without incurring the wrath of the holy God. 
who views the destruction of his image as an affront to himself. The Alabama court's ruling last week stemmed from wrongful death lawsuits brought by couples whose frozen embryos were accidentally destroyed. I do think that the ruling is a bit extreme to charge somebody who accidentally dropped or destroyed an embryo. They didn't do it on purpose, but accidentally did it. Where's the mercy? Is not God merciful and forgiving? There needs to be mercy on those who are not intentionally destroying embryos. So that, that's where I, I feel it's a bit extreme in this ruling. But I do believe that life that begins in the womb is an individual. And the Bible says, thou shalt not murder. Therefore, we should stand with God's law and not seek to destroy life, but to preserve life. Amen? And therefore, responsible relationships where consummation in marriage the Bible is clear, the bed is undefiled in marriage. But when individuals are promiscuous and having relations outside of marriage, committing fornication, they need to be delivered from the sin of lust. And Christ is able to set them free, amen? There's no sin that Christ can set us free from. The Bible says his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So there needs to be an understanding there that Christ died to separate sin from you, not for you to continue in a life of fornication. So just wanted to touch on these points. They're very important because they're in relation to God's law, and some are violating God's law unknowingly. 